Hi educators, if you are like me, you may be looking for meaningful ways to use and explore data within your classroom. Data is a big part of our world today and there's no way we can really ignore helping students process and understand data in a deep and rich way. And I think slow reveal graphs offer one way to do this with students. So if you're more interested in slow reveal graphs and how to use this instructionally with students, head over to slowrevealgraphs.com. You're going to find a wealth of information, including places that you can read more about them, resources that are already developed, and more. I even found some great webinars on their site. Now, I'm not going to focus on what it is in the instructional aspects, but I do want to take a moment and focus on the technical aspects of how you can create your own. Now, this may not be the end all be all. Some of you may have far more technical ways to do this that make them look even better, but I want to start simply with how do you take those graphs you find and crop and change things around within Google Slides so that you can use this as a slow graph, so real graph in your class. So I'm heading over to the New York Times. A while ago, they had a post called Charts, Graphs, and Maps from three years of what's going on in this graph. So I am going to go through this, and because I specifically am writing this little bit as a post for social studies teachers, I wanna take a look at a graph that definitely ties into social studies and maybe even some, well, I guess I would say it definitely ties in the science. So I have this sources of electricity generation in the United States. I'm going to right click and copy this image. Keeping in mind, I do wanna cite my source when I'm using this just so that I am modeling um, being a good digital citizen, I'm going to copy this in here and I'm going to start with doing some cropping and changing things around so they can't see all of the information because that's what a slow reveal graph is about, is not showing students everything right away and thinking about what we wonder and notice about the data before we get into the specifics. So the first thing I am going to do is I put this in the middle of a Google slide. You can obviously add titles and other things and fancy it up a little bit, add a background, but I'm going to be using the crop tool in this graph. So I'm going to click on crop and then I'm just going to drag this down. If for some reason I don't grab the right bar, I'm going to do it again. So you notice I cropped off the title and I'm going to drag the bottom up and crop off the key as well. Okay, I have what I want there, but maybe I want more information gone from this graph as well. Maybe I want to remove these titles here within this graph. So I have my first graph partially done. I am going to take, and because these are within the picture, I can't quite crop them out. So I'm going to draw a box over them. And I could simply just leave it as a white box over top of the graph. There's nothing saying that you can't do that. It may cause some confusion depending on my student's age or if I don't think this looks quite as graphically pleasing. I can also use another really cool tool called a color picker that is going to let me fill in these boxes with the exact same color so then students don't even realize something is missing. So I do have one more. Oops. I'm going to just copy that and I'm going to cover over this wind here as well. Dragging it in. Okay, and then I'm going to move it up ever so slightly, holding down control or shift and then using the arrow key so that I can move it up even smaller increments. Okay, they're all on top of where I need them to be. 
I'm going to select each of my boxes, holding down control in order to select each of them, and I'm gonna make sure all of the borders are transparent. Now, the next thing I'm going to need is some type of color identification. There's several extensions out there. I happen to use Color Pick Eyedropper. It's a little clunky, but it works. And all I do is I turn it on, and when I turn it on, it's going to get me the hex code, which is that hashtag code right underneath here for this exact color. So I'm gonna take and copy this. You can use the shortcut control C. And then I'm gonna click on my square, and I'm gonna click the fill, and I'm gonna click on custom, and then I'm just going to paste in that color and Voila, it disappeared. Students will never even know it is there. So I'm gonna do this real quick for the others. We're gonna get the other colors here. Again, this isn't something you have to do. It just happens to be my personal preference about how I like to clean things up. And you'll notice all of these custom colors are now coming into this slide deck so that I can use them later and I don't have to look them up again. Your colors are only specific for that slide deck, so it won't remember those forever after, but it makes it nice when you're working in a single deck here. Okay, I have all of those filled in and I'm ready for the next part of my graph. So all I'm going to do is copy this slide. I'm going to do a control C and then a control V while I am on that slide selected over here. And in this one, I'm just going to go through and I'm going to find those rectangles and I am going to delete them. You could also move your picture up ever so slightly so you can quickly see those rectangles and delete them. But all you can see um, through what I'm doing is I'm using just shape tools and the crop tool to kind of manipulate what it is that I'm showing in my graph. So there's part two, and then I'm gonna copy two into three, and this time I'm gonna go back and click on the image and hit the crop, and I'm going to uncrop the key. I might need to move my out a little bit so that I can uncrop the key and show this here. Perfect, and then I'm gonna resize this to fit on my slide, and then I want to do this one more time. And this time I am going to uncrop again, and I'm going to show everything, and I'm going to fit that on my slide. So obviously you as an educator would want to read a little bit more about slow reveal graphs and then make decisions based on what it is you're trying to work on with students, um, the types of questions you want to ask students, and also your grade level on what data you'll want to reveal in each step. Now the really important thing when you go to use a slow reveal graph that you created yourself is that you do this in present mode. That way students are not seeing the data down the side as you have it in the regular slide mode. They are seeing the slides one at a time. So here's that first slide. Obviously I've got no words on it. I add the words, I add the key, and now I add the title of the graph or any other features that I need to add. So hopefully this gives you a quick tutorial on how you can easily do this yourself in Google Slides without a lot of work.